Greetings and welcome back, math people of YouTube. It's Kamal here once again with a very interesting case study in differential equations. We're looking for a function y of x such that the product of its first and second derivatives actually equals the third derivative. Okay, cool. So let's get started. The first thing I'd like to do is expand by the reciprocal of y double prime and of course we do lose the solution of y double prime equal to zero which is boring so yeah we don't mind that so that means we have y triple prime divided by y double prime equal to y prime and now integrating we have on the left hand side y double prime in the denominator and its derivative up in the numerator so that means we would get log y double prime on the left and of course the integral of y prime is well y so we have y plus a constant of integration a and this implies on exponentiating stuff that we have y double prime equal to e to the y plus a which of course can be written as e to the y times e to the a and we'll just absorb e to the a into a because well it's another constant so our new differential equation is y double prime equal to a times e to the y. So we now have an autonomous differential equation. Well, we had one before as well, but this is another autonomous differential equation. And here we have y prime, y double prime completely in terms of y. So we might as well make the substitution of letting dy by dx equal to u, which implies that the second derivative of y with respect to x equals du by dx. But notice that this, this would cause a problem. We would now have a differential equation in three variables, u, y, and x, which is far from ideal. But we could fix that by employing the chain rule. So we now have du by dy times dy by dx, and dy by dx is our u variable. So this means the y double prime equals u times du by dy. Okay, cool. So our differential equation, terribly sorry about that, now transforms into, we had y double prime, right? So that means we have u times du by dy equal to a times e to the y, which is a nice separable differential equation. So we have u du equal to a times e to the y dy integrating gives us on the left hand side u squared by 2 equal to a times e to the y plus another constant of integration b. Now we can expand by 2 and you guessed it will absorb the factor of 2 into a and b because well they're still constants. So that means we have u squared equal to a times e to the y plus b and of course taking the square root means that we have u equal to plus or minus root a times e to the y plus b. Now recall that we define dy by dx as the u variable, so we have another very nice separable differential equation to solve. We have dy by dx equal to plus or minus root a times e to the y plus b. By the way, we're dealing with the interesting case of a and b being non-zero because letting either one of them equal to zero would of course lead to a very boring solution development, which is something we are quite averse to. We are averse to boring math here. That and talking to women. That is quite terrifying. I, I mean, you know, the boring math bit. That's terrifying, of course. Rather, comment down below which is harder. Going through, I mean, watching or solving an entire math problem knowing it's extremely trivial or mustering up the courage to actually speak to a woman. What exactly were we up to? Well, we're trying to solve this differential equation. So... It's a separable one, so we can write this as dy divided by root a times e to the y plus b, plus or minus, of course, and this here equals dx. So we integrate, and on the right-hand side, we have x plus another constant of integration, c. Now, what about the integral on the left-hand side? Well, we could just expand using e to the negative y, so here it goes. We have root e to the negative 2y divided by root e to the negative 2y. So that means we have the integral of e to the negative y dy divided by root a times e to the negative y plus b times e to the negative 2y. And now for the obvious substitution, 
where we're gonna let e to the negative y equal t, which implies that e to the negative y dy with a negative sign equals dt. Okay, cool, so this implies that the integral i equals negative integral dt divided by root a times t plus bt squared. And now we can adopt a completing square approach for the denominator, the argument of the square root in the denominator, that is. So we got bt squared plus at. b factored out, we got t squared plus a divided by b times t. And now to write it in a more fancy form, we have b times t squared plus 2 times t times a divided by 2b, correct? And now we have, well, we need the square of a divided by 2b. So we have a by 2b squared minus a by 2b or not 2b squared. And this thing here turns into t plus a divided by 2b squared. And we have this minus a squared divided by 4b squared as well. Now, performing the multiplication, we have b times t plus a divided by 2b squared minus a squared divided by 4b. Now that we have our transformed integral, we're going to transform it again because why the hell not? In fact, we're going to take this thing, rather the square root of that thing, we're going to let root b times t plus a divided by 2b equal to a divided by 2 root b z. And this implies that root b dt equals a divided by 2 root b dz, which further implies that dt is just, of course, a divided by 2b dt. Okay, cool. So this implies that the target integral i equals minus a divided by 2b integral dz divided by root we have a squared divided by 4b z squared minus a squared divided by 4b. And of course we can factor out the a squared divided by 4b term, leaving us with negative a divided by 2b times, what exactly do we have? Well, we have two times root b divided by a, and of course that means we have some nice cancellation taking place, and we have the integral of dz divided by root z squared minus one, where the integral is in fact the inverse Cauchy function. So this implies that i here equals negative of root b divided by b is just 1 over root b times the inverse Cauchy of z. And now returning to the original differential equation problem, recall that we had a plus or minus sign somewhere. So yeah, exactly. It's not the target integral that's equal to x plus c, it's plus or minus the target integral equal to x plus c. So that means we have finally x plus c equal to, we have a plus or minus sign. So again, we just have plus or minus one by root b times inverse cosh of z. Now transforming from the z realm back to the y realm. But I could do that later. I might as well first expand using plus or minus root b. So we have inverse cosh z here equal to plus or minus root b times x plus c. And this further implies that z here equals the cosh of plus or minus root b times x plus c. And now what exactly was z? Well, z was defined as a divided by 2 root b z equal to root b times t plus a divided by 2b, which implies that z itself is defined as 2b divided by a and expanding that gives us 2b divided by a times t plus 1. And what exactly was t? Well, t here was e to the negative y, so we have z equal to 2b divided by a times e to the negative y plus 1, and we're back into the y realm. And this implies that after moving stuff around, that e to the negative y equals, well, we have a divided by 2b times the cosh of plus or minus root b times x plus c minus 1. Okay, cool. 
Now we can reciprocate this thing and then take the logarithm to get y, and that gives us log of what exactly? Well, we have 2b divided by a times the cosh, terribly sorry about that, the cosh of plus or minus root b times x plus c minus 1, and that here is y expressed in terms of x. And before Zanaid Parker has a chance to comment, I'll leave it as an exercise to him and only him to differentiate this three times to prove that y triple prime does indeed equal y prime times y double prime. A shortcut would be to say that if there ever was a function satisfying such an equation, I'm pretty sure it's this bad boy. Anyway, that was fun. I hope you enjoyed the video. Be sure to like and subscribe. More importantly, I hope you learned something from the video. Do drop me a follow on Instagram as well. And in case you like the channel and you like the effort I'm putting out, consider supporting me on Patreon. All links in the description box. Thank you. See you next time.